this is our 10 milliliter volumetric pipette. In order to accurately measure out 10 milliliters, we want to get the bottom of the meniscus lined up with this marking on the glassware that's just above the wide portion of the pipette. In order to operate this, we want to insert it gently but snugly into the end of the pipette pump. When we are ready to measure the fluid, we want to gently use the thumb wheel to draw fluid up into a volumetric pipette. We're going to continue to use the thumb wheel until we have lined up the bottom of the meniscus with the marking on the glass bar, once again, located just above the wide portion of the pipette. We are now going to transfer this fluid to our Erlenmeyer. And push down on the top of the pump to add it carefully. If you haven't already added your magnetic stir bar, you want to gently tilt the container slide the stir bar down the side in order to minimize splashing. Finally, you must be very sure to add a few drops of your pH indicator. If you do not add this indicator, you will not be able to see when the reaction is complete and it will wreck your experiment. So the indicators will come in dropper bottles such as these. We want to add the amount of drops indicated by the procedure, generally just a few drops are required. For this particular indicator, you'll notice that it's colorless, but we will see a dramatic color change when we reach the end of the titration. We are now ready to start our titration experiment. Before we begin, you may wish to put a piece of white paper down on the top of the stir plates. As many of them are stained, they'll give you a good surface in order to see the color change of the titration experiment. Before we begin, we have to record the initial volume in the burette. Perhaps the easiest way to do this is to gently release the clamp and slide the burette downwards to a level where you can easily see the fluid. A trick that may be used to help us see the level of the fluid is to take a white piece of paper with a black line drawn across it. And that's going to allow us to easily pinpoint the bottom of the meniscus. One thing to note is that these uh, burettes are marked near as tenth of a milliliter. So if we're using proper same thing rules, we want to go to one decimal place beyond that. So I would say that this one currently contains 1.47 milliliters of fluid. You'd want to record that volume to two decimal places into your data. With our initial volume recorded, I'm going to slide our burette back up replace our magnetic uh, stir, stir plate, add our container of analyte, and I find it best if the tip of the burette is just below the lip of our container to help reduce the chance of spillage or splashing. I am now going to turn on the stir. We want to adjust the rate so that we have a good amount of stirring without splashing. That's pretty good right there. I'm now going to begin adding the titrant to the analyte. As I add, I'm going to open the stopcock here. And you'll notice as the titrant hits the analyte, there'll be splashes of color, in this case a purple color. That purple color you're seeing is the indicator interacting with the base that's added. The purple color is quickly disappearing because it's rapidly reacting with the acid. We are now closing in on the endpoint. You'll see that these purple splashes of color are starting to linger longer and longer. This means that we want to slow down the addition process because our goal is to pinpoint the endpoint 
to a single drop of volume. Our end point is going to be where that purple or pink color lingers for these 60 seconds. That's going to indicate that our reaction is complete and we've added enough base to completely neutralize our acid. You want to achieve the faintest pink or purple color possible, indicating that you've only added a very, very slight excess of base. We're getting very close now. We are perhaps one or two more drops away. Turning my vision back on. And there is our end point right there. Notice that our purple color is faint. Perhaps one more drop. It's being obstinate. One more drop of titrant. And there we go. There's our color. That's our end point. And this one looks like it's going to stick around for at least 60 seconds. So there's our end point. As you can see, there's a very obvious color change. And we've pinpointed the volume down to an exact drop of base being added. Now what we want to do so we want to turn off our stirring. We are going to remove our analyte, slide our stir plate out of the way, and once again, slide our burette downwards so it will be easy to read our volume. I am once again going to use the piece of paper with the black line to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. We want to record this volume to two decimal places. And I believe we're at 13.95 milliliters. So if you subtract those amounts, that 13.95, subtract from that the initial amount that we recorded, that'll be your volume of titrant that you added. Your experiment probably requires you to perform multiple titration trials. Now that we know how much volume is required in order to reach our endpoint, it's going to allow us to do our second, third, or fourth trials more rapidly. We can, for example, add our first several milliliters very quickly, and as we approach our known volume of the endpoint, we can slow down our addition. Should you miss that endpoint because you weren't paying attention, had your head turned, or maybe you accidentally turned the stopcock the wrong direction, you will need to repeat that titration trial. Generally, your waste is going to go into a waste container much like this. I'm going to pour our titration waste into the container. And I seem to have dropped my stir bar into the container by accident. Should this happen to you, you can use this magnetic stir wand, generally located by the fume hood, in order to retrieve it quickly and easily from the container. Now we must wash off the chemicals off our stir bar. So I'm going to bring it to the sink and just lightly rinse it with water. I've rinsed this burette several times with water to ensure that all the titrants flushed out. I'm now going to place it into the burette rack with the tip pointed upward and the stopcock open such that it may air dry. As always, should you run into difficulties, please ask your instructor questions. They're there to help you. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Dr. Nick, signing off.